Mertz, the coach and by the rear of the school. This is just dozens and dozens of students that are fleeing for safety. We have had reports of shots being fired inside the school. We do have some fatalities. gunshots and then uh, bullets ricocheting off lockers. Most of you think that it'll never happen to you at a year school and unfortunately it has. When I go back to the school, it's both just my high school where I had friends, where I had teachers and classes and homework and I was on the wrestling team. It's also where Rachel died. It's also where Matt and Isaiah died. It's also where my life changed forever. I was a sophomore when the shooting happened. On April 20th, 1999, uh, I was in the bathroom perfecting my hair, and my sister was waiting for me. When I got in the car, she was getting on to me about making us late, and uh, we started getting into an argument in the last moment I had with her was I slammed the car door shut on her. No idea that would be the last time I'd see her. During my lunch period, I went to the school library to study for a test. I heard these popping noises coming from outside the school. They started to get louder. And then this teacher ran into the room. She was completely frantic. She ran over to the phone to call the police and while she was on the phone she kept yelling at all of us to hide and get underneath the tables. So I got underneath the table with my friend Matt. My friend Isaiah was walking by. I called out his name and he came over and sat next to me. I realized at that point that something serious was happening. The library was the first room the shooters came into. They were shooting off their guns immediately. Uh, they were mocking students before they shot or killed them. And they treated it like it was a game. They came over to where I was and they shot and killed Isaiah and then they shot and killed Matt. At some point I had just decided to lie down and pretend to be dead. I was feeling so much fear, I thought I was gonna die. I, I literally felt like my heart was going to stop beating. A couple minutes went by and I felt like I heard a very strong inner voice speak and just said to get out of there. I saw the shooters had left. So I yelled at everyone, come on, let's get out of here. And then we were running out of the room and I was so thankful to be alive. But at the same time, I actually felt really bad because I, I left my friends underneath that table. It was just a regular class day at school. It was. It was uh -huh. until about 40 minutes ago. Let's go see your friend. Feels good. Really good. Oh, man. The first thing I did was I called my mom. And I said, Mom, I'm OK, but I think there's something wrong with Rachel. And I don't even know why I said that. I got home. My family was shocked to see me because I had blood all over my clothes. And we were all watching the news and we were waiting to hear from Rachel. We ended up waiting all night. She didn't call. The next morning we got a phone call from uh, the police department and they told us that Rachel was the first one that was killed. My mom came down to tell me the news. And I could see on her face that she was just so worried about me and how I was going to take it. I put my hands on her shoulders and I said, Mom, I'm going to be OK. God's going to take care of me. The next thing I remember happening um, was that there were people in our house. And um, we got a call from the Today Show. And they said, We'd like to have you on with Isaiah's dad. And I wanted to give Isaiah's dad a hug. Thank you so much for being here. We are so terribly sorry about your son. Okay. It was two 
mornings later, after the shooting on April 22nd, the camera lights were out and it was pouring snow. Craig, how are you doing this morning? Uh, that's, that's, that's hard. You were in the library with Isaiah and another good friend. I started to share about what had happened to me and I shared about Isaiah's last moments. They said, uh, they said there's a N word over here. And uh, Isaiah tried to back up uh, and they shot Isaiah. He's crying, hearing about the last moments of his son. He's holding my hand. And then I start to talk about Rachel and I started, I, I started to cry. All these, uh, all these people that I was praying for, they, they were other brothers and sisters were showing up. But not your sister. It was the first time I started to talk about my sister on camera. Some of your sister's friends I know have turned her car into a memorial. She, she was set apart from her school in a way. I, I thought she was more grown up. I had no idea that that would be something that I would be doing a thousand more times over the next 20 years. In the weeks to follow after the shooting, we started to go through Rachel's possessions. We knew that she had a, a number of journals and she liked writing. And we started to see there was this theme that she had. She said, I have this theory that if one person will go out of their way to show compassion, it will start a chain reaction of the same. My family, uh, in the months to come, we started to feel a sense of purpose and mission with telling Rachel's story. My first presentation I did, I was 18. And I'll continue to share as long as I live, as long as it's making an impact on schools. One of the big things that we're focused on is how you see yourself. Each and every one of us in this room has a great capacity to do great things. I challenge students to choose positive influences. Rachel wanted to make a positive difference, so she surrounded herself with the right influences that helped her be a powerful, positive person. I talk about the last time I had with my sister, yelling at her, fighting with her, calling her names. And I challenge the students to find five people in their life that mean something to them, that they love, and tell them how much they value them, how much they appreciate them, how much they care about them. It is hard to share the same stories over and over, but it's worth it when I see the impact that it has on someone's life and that they're getting something from my story. When I hear about a, another school shooting, I'm saddened. It's like, well, I gotta keep going. I gotta keep doing this. One of our goals is to make me kind of a big brother to any student that has been through a school shooting. So you're gonna have this continuing building group of survivors that can help newcoming survivors. I have a piece of Rachel with me. I have, a, I have her memory. I think she would be proud. I think she would be proud of me. I think she would be proud of my family. Uh, I hope to see her one day again, and that would be a very cool moment if she were somehow aware of what has happened with her story and her legacy, and to say, nice job, little bro. You know, that would be pretty cool. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.